if you time it right, women with epilepsy can be vibrators for men. I just like a little bit of tension in my room before I get started. Like, I'm so glad y'all laughed at that. Sometimes that joke just goes bad for me and I'm stuck up here more frustrated than Michael J. Fox trying to edge a sketch. Like, oh. uh, guess I'll tell y'all a little bit about myself. I know I look very, very white, but I'm actually third generation white trash. <laughs> My family's the type of white trash that orders those Ancestry.com DNA tests to find new cousins to fuck. <laughs> True. Man, we grew up poor too, man. My mom couldn't afford to buy me shoes. She just told me to go make friends with diabetic kids and wait. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of things they say you're not supposed to joke about, like rape and pedophilia and trans people, and all I got 10 minutes to get to all of that shit, so y'all better buckle the fuck up. <laughs> I don't actually do stand-up comedy full-time. I actually work full-time in an underground casino in Houston. Thanks, that's not the joke, that's just my job. But... Who was right? Like, I guess most people don't come up here and admit to felony, so I'll take a move for that. Thank you, man. And people ask me since I work in the gambling industry if I do a lot of gambling jokes on stage. And sorry, but not really. Like, I can tell y'all R. Kelly probably doesn't play blackjack because he keeps hitting on 14s, but. <laughs> hey, don't. Oh, there's a much darker joke about splitting eights I could have gotten. I'm being nice right now. Like, <laughs> kidding, man. Like, R. Kelly could have been a Hall of Famer if he hadn't spent his whole career stuck in the minors. <laughs> I can do this shit all night. Don't encourage me, please. Y'all have no idea how much time I spend writing jokes about how that man just pissed his career away. <laughs> Y'all ever wonder if R. Kelly's attracted to trans women? I mean, technically, their pussies are usually only a couple years old. <laughs> That's the old I was waiting for. Now we can move on from that shit. <laughs> This seems like as good a spot in the set as any to tell y'all that I'm actually here tonight celebrating 11 months of sobriety. Thank y'all. That's kind of a big reaction for 11 months. Like, a little bit of perspective, people. Whitney Houston hasn't done any drugs in about eight years. I guess we're both killing it. That's fine. Y'all can go out. I don't mind talking about the drug shit for two reasons. I mean, one, my comedy goes down a little bit better when you realize that I used to smoke crack. What the fuck was that? <laughs> and two, like, the second I got on stage and y'all saw six foot four, 142 pounds, y'all were thinking, this is a meth body, right? I mean, Oh, people have a lot of questions when you go up on stage and admit you're a drug addict. Like, what drugs did you do? That's a hard question. I did fucking all of the drugs, so you are right. Like, I used to try to get high off shit that's not even supposed to get you high. Like, has anybody in here ever taken a 30-day supply of birth control just to see? I stayed out of trouble, man. Didn't get high. Didn't get pregnant. But mostly didn't get high. Like, had to move on to plan B. <laughs> Why are you laughing at that, y'all? Like, that was a very emotional period in my life. <laughs> Man, weed's a dangerous drug too, y'all. Like, weed makes me think absolutely every thought that goes through my head is funny and appropriate for stage when I know it's really not. Like, I'll sit back and smoke a blunt and things like, if a deaf person gets Parkinson's, does it look like they're stuttering to other deaf people? <laughs> you think that's fucked up? You're not gonna like what happens in three minutes. Just a little bit of foreshadowing for you. Like, the question I get asked most about my drug habits, though, if I can be honest, the most annoying one is like, what's the worst thing you ever did to get drugs? I hate that question, man. That's a bullshit question. I want you to come to me and ask me what you really want to know, like what you were thinking when I came on stage. What did, did you ever have to suck dick for crack? No. 
Sorry to disappoint y'all, I did not ever have to suck dick for crack. <laughs> I did once eat an 84-year-old woman's pussy for Percocet, if y'all are interested in that story. <laughs> yeah, let me just save you the trouble. I wish I had sucked dick for crack. <laughs> Get all that shit, man. Old pussy is fucking dangerous. Did y'all know if y'all come on a life alert necklace, the cops come too? <laughs> Bitch was so old, she had a separate entrance for black dicks. <laughs> if I sound like some of my comedy's in a little bit of a bad mood, I apologize, but I am going through kind of a rough breakup right now. I caught my fiance cheating on me. And it's not so much that I caught her cheating on me, you know, people get cheated on. It's, it's how I found out that's fucking with me. I found out my girl was cheating on me because I read a text message from her to another man. And here's what it said word for word. If you bring me a sweet tea from McDonald's after Ben goes to work, I'll suck your dick. It's a dollar. Bro, that's like a dollar and seven cents. Do you know how emotionally damaging it is to get cheated on for less money than you have in the cup holder of your car right now? Fucking just for a sweet tea, too. Like, how trash do you feel like your blowjobs are as a woman that you don't even feel like you deserve fries? <laughs> Like, so many questions about that text message. Like, what the fuck was she gonna do when the McRib came back? Like, you know? Shit shakes you up. Like, I was dating a fucking McSlut. Like, did not know. Kept going through her phone. She was cheating on me with a lot of guys, y'all. She was cheating on me with 22 other guys. Right? Like, fucking blackjack's only 21, people. Who gets all the way to blackjack and is like, hit me with one more dick, I feel lucky. <laughs> That's close, but I don't really feel like I'm doing the metaphor of how big my ex, how big of a whore my ex was, justice. So let me try it this way and I'll get off stage for you guys. She's the type of girl that if you drove her slowly by an abortion clinic, her phone would automatically connect to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> I, I just want to say one quick thing before I get off stage, man. Stand-up comedy is a dream of mine. Thank you all for coming out tonight and supporting my dream. Like, very specifically, I want to be famous for doing this. Like, I want to be so famous I can be on America's Next, next Top Model. Like, not the show, just the model. <laughs> my name's been Ben Hager. Y'all have been super fun. Y'all give it up for your host one more time. Play it up.